Getting bit. There he is. Got him. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, dude. Nice job, dude. Good, good eyes. Woo. The Thunderbolt Rex one we hadn't been to before. And, uh, you know, I'd heard good reports there was some permit out there. And it's just cool to go out there and explore these shipwrecks. You know, Thunderbolt out of Duck Key here, it's about, only about a 10 mile ride or less. And uh, the fish I love it. On. All right. Good job, dude. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah! Come on, come on! Oh! He ate it! He ate it! He ate it. Nice, baby! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about! I thought you said you had I to... Look at him, relax. Oh! Dude, he just ripped my boat off! Oh! oh. Awesome! Look at that big boy! The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. Well, we got plenty of crabs, right? Yeah, man. Looked at them this morning, and they were all good. So, are we going to go offshore to that Thunderbolt? I think it's calm enough. I think we should run out and check the couple wrecks there. Um, you know, April here, this spawning permit. They should be a big school of them out there. And uh, with the clear skies, we'll be able to see them and sight cast them. We haven't done that in a long time. Yeah, I like it. We've got plenty of jig heads, too. I've only fished that Thunderbolt once or twice, and it was pretty pretty intense. There's a, it's a big, giant ship down there. Yeah? You know, I think we can market on this new transducer that we have. Definitely market. Um, in April, I always start missing the permit, because they, you know, that time of the year, they typically leave the flats for the most part, and uh, go offshore and spawn. You'll still see some really big ones and some, I think, some kind of smaller ones, but for the most part, in my area anyway, they 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 disappear, and I just stop fishing for them entirely, so we'll the go opportunity where they are. <laughs> to go where they are is good, yeah. Totally fine with the permit. We could do permit all day, every day, and I'd be just fine. Usually the first part of April, you'll notice a definite decline in the numbers of fish on the flats. You're seeing permit throughout the day, then all of a sudden, one day, it's a few less, and a few less, and a few less, and a few less, until, wow, really not seeing that many permit up here. I wonder what's going on. Well, what's going on is that in the springtime, there's a spawning ritual, and those fish generally move off the flats. And so the reef edge all the way up, wrecks, different, different areas, offshore, uh, apparently that's where they go and and gather in these big groups and sometimes really big groups yeah I'm gonna get up here and look around hopefully that Sun will peek out behind the clouds might see these guys flashing or the big light colored mass under the water so this is the the Thunderbolt right yeah uh, and was that a wreck that they sunk on purpose or yeah yeah it's a big uh, man-made uh, so this one's on basically every chart and yep. the state of Florida maintains it with these buoys and stuff? Yeah, they've got a couple big underwater buoys and you know the popular dive destination. All out. It's kind of interesting not to see a dive boat out here today. Um, Do they dive 150 feet? Yeah. Yeah, they'll scoop. I think the top of the wreck's probably 110 or so. The Thunderbolt wreck's one we hadn't been to before. And uh, you know, I'd heard good reports there was some permit out there, and it's just cool to go out there and explore these shipwrecks. You know, Thunderbolt out of Duck Key here, it's about, only about a 10 mile ride or less, um, about five and a half miles off, off of Marathon, and uh, it sits in about 120 feet of water, and this is an old um, artificial reef that was a, it was a World War II ship that was um, purposely sunk there in um, 1986 as an artificial reef. And um, you know, we have our reefs, our nice, you know, beautiful coral reefs that hold a lot of fish, but when you get out past 100 feet of water, there's really not a lot of a reef structure. So when you get out in that kind of oasis and put a big artificial reef there, the fish love it. I think I see something out here, Rich. All right. You ready? You got a new Get crab. up on the bow and cast at 11 o'clock about, or 12 o'clock about 60 feet. Let it drop down a there. 11? Now well, about one. Let that drop down there. Getting bit. There he is. Got him. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. I'm going to get this one down there, see if I can get one too. Nice job, dude. Good, good eyes. Woo. That feels like the right one. 
Oh, well. I can see some more right out there. Okay, I'm going for it. <laughs> With those permit out there in that clear water, you know, they fight different because it's up and down instead of going out. On the flats, they go out. And man, <laughs> that first permit, when I, when, I, when I got that shot on them, I threw it out there. I think it must have just sank down maybe, you know, 15, 20 feet maybe. Um, get that bite, thump, and uh, real tight. And, and man, that fish, <laughs> I would have thought it was three times the size it was. I mean, he just, you know, does so much power. And I had him on a pretty heavy rod. That was big flat body. He's able to go straight down that big V-tail. Um, just a powerful, powerful fish. And you're really able to feel the full brunt of a permit out in that deep water. Gosh, they're strong. It's so different to fight these permit in the deep water compared on the flats, you know, where they go straight down instead of out. Yeah. They fight a lot harder straight down. They definitely fight hard. Wow. I mean, they're a hard fighting fish anyway. Wow. We got light tackle and we got a wreck to deal with. We got predators. Good way to start. I can see that black pectoral here from 80 feet. 80 feet down, huh? Man, that water. Wow, that is, is really cool. Look at that. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort, the only key you'll need. By Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. By Lowrance, find, navigate, dominate with Lowrance. And by Fraybill, Buff, St. Croix Rods, and Florida Keys and Key West. We're not marking the wreck, so that's good. Well, they do not. They do not have to be on the wreck. We got them slightly coming the right way now. My experience is that they're more often not on the wreck than they are on the wreck. We got some color. This Thunderbolt wreck is, is incredible. You know, it's out there in a perfect spot for all kinds of fish. The permit they come out there to spawn every spring, and there can be just thousands of them out there. Um, and it's in that beautiful blue water. Um, other fish that are there, there's always goliath groupers, um, all kinds of species of jacks, snappers, um, just all kinds of um, species, you know, make it their home. And for us that day, you know, we were, particularly we're looking for the permit. Um, I know it's one of your favorite fish to yeah, catch. Absolutely. Um, and for me, um, it's the permit, you know, it's such an inshore species to see them in that blue water is really cool. Now, this is what we were waiting for. The clouds at first, it's hard to see them. And finally, a little bit of sun, a little bit of patience. There you go. Oh, that's a big fish, too. That's a good one, man. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Very nice. That Very is nice. so cool. That is so cool. That is so nice. <laughs> and just a few, just a few days ago, weeks ago, this guy might have been up on the flat. Pretty eating, interesting to see this migration. How crabs. They, I guess they all come out here to do their spawn thing, huh? Spring spawn. And what about a month offshore they spend? That's, I mean, I would start seeing more and more of them start showing up again in May, but you know, honestly, you're tarpon fishing most of May, so I don't know how long they're out there. Like when you spend your time looking for them all the time. All I know is they, better. they disappear. Look at him in that first beautiful week of April, clear right? water, man. That water is so clear and pretty. I think he's ready to go. There he is. <laughs> oh, he's so clear. Look at him, man. You can see every scale in that fish as he goes away. <laughs> Look at that. He almost straightened my hook. I have put so much pressure on him. <laughs> well, good okay. eye, dude. Yeah, good job. That's a way to start. Good way to start. Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary is established in 1990 and protects both natural and historical resources within its 2,900 square nautical mile jurisdictional boundary. We cover both state and federal waters and the resources that we have encompass 
artificial reefs like the, the nine that are on the Shipwreck Trail. The Sanctuary Shipwreck Trail was launched in 1997, just nine years after the establishment of the Florida Keys Sanctuary. It was meant to engender an appreciation for our maritime history, and that was a cross-section of everything from the Spanish colonial period ships of the 1733, like the San Pedro, the modern ships that uh, were traveling through the Keys during the time of expansion into the United States, and then the modern period, like the Thunderbolt. The artificial reef Thunderbolt was built in 1942 as one of 16 mine planting vessels built for the United States Army's Coast Artillery Corps. It was transferred to the Navy in 1949. It sat mothballed until 1961. From 1961, it was purchased by a company in Miami and was used by Florida Power and Light to survey and study the uh, effects of lightning strikes. From there, it was donated to the Florida Artificial Reefs Foundation and was sunk in um, 1986 off of Marathon, the Middle Keys, about 5.25 miles off of Key Colony Beach. In the 80s, there was a, a surge of artificial reefs that were going down throughout the state of Florida. And part of that was the diving industry was starting to increase. So the number of ships that were going down as artificial reefs were two-pronged. One for dive destinations to increase economy as well as fishing. So they do tend to aggregate fish to them. The more modern artificial reefs being iron attract certain small species of coral and some other types of sponge and marine life will attract to anything that is stable on the bottom and you know some of the historic resources have established a place for coral to actually attach to and have created some beautiful historic resources. These projects of sinking the ships and creating artificial reefs have been pretty effective. I mean, for tourism, diving, fishing, the whole the whole system is benefiting from it. And um, we had the Vandenberg down in Key West. You got the Thunderbolt up here. There's probably some others that I don't even know about. There's a bunch of them. But it it is a great thing because it's a you can go out there and really fish over this this artificial area that is going to create a perfect fish habitat. Oh, on. All right. Good job, dude. Oh, that's awesome. Did you get one out there? Yeah, I got one out. Yeah, I got to go over you or under you or something. We're anchored right here. <sighs> nice job, dude. And that's the man. No doubt about it. You got him on a light rod, too. Oh, I can see him down there. You know, the rig is a little different out there because you're, you're dealing with 120 feet of water. And I was finding going with the heaviest jig head I could find. Put that on there and put a crab on it. And so there were a couple of things that we were getting ready for. We were getting ready for the long cast when we actually see the fish. When we're not seeing any fish, just having one at about mid column. Yeah, that's the key, getting down to them. Um, the jig head seems to work really good and you know, a rod that you can cast a long ways because that was a key force is when we saw them, we needed to get it there. And really, um, we weren't seeing them very consistently. Um, with, a, with a haze and the cloud cover, it was hard to see too far away. But when we saw them, we needed to make a long cast and get to them. That 20 pound braid allowed us to really cast a long ways and um, you know, took advantage of our opportunities. I love technology. Marking those things like that. This guy wants to go to the bottom, but I have news for him. He might get eaten by a larger fish. There's definitely down some there. sharks in here at times. He's, well, he's coming, coming right at you now, fast. huh? I bet he was running from something. He's running to something. He wants to come to me. The water that day, I would say, right up there with the clearest I've ever seen it. I mean, the divers would be going crazy and dancing in the streets. It was as good as it um, gets here. Yeah, but that, that day, for whatever reason, that blue water pushed in and was right over the top of, of the Thunderbolt, and it was as clear as I've ever seen it. I can see that black pectoral here from 80 feet. 80 feet down, huh? 
Man, that water wow, that is, is really cool. Look at that. Unbelievably clear. Look how clear that water is and how you can see them down there. It's incredible. Well, hopefully we'll see the school here. It's slicking off like this. It's like looking through a glass bottom boat, man. It's just perfect. Look at that. Wow. That is awesome. See that thing. No question. I mean, the water's so clear, I can tell, I can pick out every detail of that fish. The black tech pectoral fans and the black dorsal and black tail. Wow. So when it comes to a fishing rod, there are just so many choices. You can come into a Worldwide Sportsman or Bass Pro Shops, look at the rods in here, and there's just, just hundreds of choices. And really, there, there's so many rods that do the same thing. I mean, there's rods that you know can all catch a bonefish or a permanent or tarpon or whatever it is. But the big difference is, is the quality of the rods themselves. There are some rods that just aren't made as well as others. You know, for years, I've used these $100 to $200 rods that I've got from different manufacturers. And, um, and they did fine, uh, they, they did just fine. I caught plenty of fish on them. Um, but what I've noticed is I would always break the tips off of them. Uh, the guides would always fall off. There would always be some rusting and, and, and corrosion. Um, the difference when I stepped up and started using the St. Croix rods is it is unbelievable how long they last. I have gone years and not broken one tip off my rod. It is just so radically better than anything else I've ever used. The components are, are just so good. The guides do not fall apart. The ceramics do not come out of the guides under incredible abuse. The St. Croix rods are made unbelievably strong. And this is St. Croix's newest rod series. This is the Legend Tournament Inshore Series. Um, these rods are awesome. They are specifically designed for the inshore saltwater fishermen, have the best components. All the guides are absolutely 100% corrosion resistant, super strong. They're not gonna break even under the hardest conditions. These rods are just unbelievably made with the best technology available. And this whole setup is just as nice as it possibly gets. They have an entire series of rods on every action that an inshore fisherman would want. Quality construction second to none. So there are a ton of rod choices and all of them will work. Um, it's just a matter of you know what kind of investment are you're willing to make. Investing in a St. Croix rod is not a, a you know a one year and done thing. St. Croix actually gives us a 15 year transferable warranty. This is a lifetime investment. You know, if you're looking to step up to the best, this is it. Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Yeti, built for the wild. Mercury Marine, go boldly. Motor Guide, accuracy matters. And by Costa, Power Pole, Ameritrail, Hook, and B&W Trailer Hitches. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the show. You know, we'd like to get to know you better, carry on the conversation, and the best way to do that is follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's awesome, man. Dude, look at that visibility. The visibility is incredible. It's almost like he's in the air. All right, you ready for him? Almost. One more time around. This one. All right! That's a good one, too, man. That's a big one, man. It is a good one. Oh, did that's not awesome. hesitate on that grab at oh, all. Oh, dude, nice work. Did not hesitate one bit. Awesome. It is pretty oh. special to see him out here in this, this blue water, you know? We're so yeah. used to seeing him in the inshore green water. Yeah. The permit is a fish, and I think that's one of my favorite things about them and what makes them my favorite fish is that there's just a lot of different situations. I mean, I think that we've almost done all the different situations that you're going to find the fish. You're going to find them single fish on the backcountry flats, tailing. We're going to find them uh, in a little bit deeper water. We're going to find schools of three and four. This situation is even different and, and even sometimes even more difficult to find them, I think, because you're looking at this giant ocean. Now it's 120 feet deep. Where might they be here? They're either going to be on the reef or they're going to be on one of these structure type things like one of these, these ships that were sunk on purpose, the Thunderbolt. But, uh, but that's one of the things about the Florida Keys and 
right here in, in the middle of the Florida Keys at Hawks K that is so perfect is pretty much anywhere that a permit swims and any kind of situation that, that you have for permit is available to us with leaving the dock at Hawks K and having this bay boat and loading it up with crabs. I mean, we can pretty much find any situation that a permit swims and I think that's super cool. <laughs> I could see that thing, you know, all these, all these black, like the black pectoral fin, I could see that from 80 feet down. The same thing that we, uh, we see when we're on the flat, you know, like that telltale sign is the black and the tail. Wow, that's perfect. Little jig head, nice healthy crab, you couldn't resist. I hope this one's out here making lots more. I like him. Awesome. And her. <laughs> Heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. Well, this one's gonna go away right now to live another day. And he's gonna go away with a friend. Look at that remora. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I need somebody to attach to, man. Looks like he grabbed that remora. He wants to go with this permit. Alright, here we go. Oh. <laughs> he tried to suck it under my hand. Alright, Mr. Permit. See you later. Thank you, buddy. Nice. Mr. Remora. Oh <laughs> yeah, hand. man! Three more is biting my hand. Watch this. Wow. Sit net him. See if we can see if we're good enough to net him. Uh, you got I can net him easy. You don't you, you see if you're challenged enough to catch him by hand. I'm gonna catch him without the permit. 